Please listen carefully. Hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Summers McKay. And I'm Christy Jensen. And we're part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We're the ones that bring you reader-funded solutions news every day to help change the tenor of the news media, social media, and the direction of your day to make it one focused on solutions. Seven days a week, rain or shine, or sleet or so, we publish. Or heat waves. Or heat waves, or (laughs) floods. Or hurricanes. Oh, man. Okay, let's not go down that dark road. <laughs> All right, fine. You're right. You're right. It's because what we do is we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, sit-on-your-couch-and-do-nothing binge-worthy podcast. Today is Tuesday, the 28th of September, 2021. Hello, my friend. How are you? I'm well, Summers. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not going to go as far as saying well. Um, I had to take a few days off the podcast as we rounded out last week. Found myself having kind of like this weird thing that happens to people that everyone says is like more painful than childbirth. Um, I had kidney stones, Christy. Not fun. I know. Super not fun. Um, But also from like a spiritual level, there's a certain element of um, sit your butt down, lady, and take a break. But it was messaging coming through from the universe. As I said, I I joked on my social media that I got benched because (laughs) on Wednesday when I was realizing I was not feeling great, Christy and I were talking and I basically was like a trying to quit my job. <laughs> and Christy was like, so you're fired till next week. <laughs> go home and go sit on your couch. And, you know, I think it's it's one of these things that women and, and a lot of people, not just women, but really, you know, we, we have a hard time listening to our bodies and a hard time taking steps back. And if you don't take a step back, sometimes you can or I know I can be a bit apocalyptic about everything. So um, I am fine. I am okay. I am not great, but I am heading toward great, I think. I would say one thing that did make me great, though, was the weekend challenge that you and Amelia chose. (laughs) Ah, yes. So I listened in and uh, I realized that I really wanted to actually go to a virtual museum myself. I wanted to get out there and explore and travel. And so from the very comfort of my sofa, I visited the Uffizi in Florence. Uh, Christy, did you travel to a museum somewhere this weekend? I did. I did. Part of what we were talking about yesterday was about the, the footprints and the ancient humans. And so I went and visited the Hall of Human Origins, the Smithsonian Mm. Museum. And this is the Natural History Museum, which is a place that I was enamored by as a little girl. And that was where Margaret Mead worked, who's one of my, like, super icon, right? Super. So so I did explore there. That's also, they have, like, woolly mammoth sculptures, and they have the Hall of the Oceans. They have just tremendous amount of resources and it's really interesting so yeah that was my my little visitation oh, <laughs> really. well mine so I have had amazing adventures at the Uffizi Museum and uh in in Italy and likewise have beautiful memories of it from when I traveled after college and then I traveled again with family and then I traveled again independently a bit later And so I I wandered around some of their grand architecture halls. And what I was actually very excited about was watching the video tours in Italian. Yeah. Uh, It (laughs) kind of sparked that creative thinking and emotional reactions I have to hearing a different language and thinking in Italian. And um, so that was that was a very I am very grateful that you all selected that as the weekend challenge. And it reminded me that perhaps we all need to just take a little trip here and there, even if it's a trip down memory lane to somewhere that was special and meaningful along the way. Uh, With that being said, I guess we have an announcement here at the Optimist Daily Update. We are going to take a hiatus. So we're going to do our update today. We're going to share the amazing stories today. 
but then we're going to be on hiatus. And um, Christy, when can people expect for us to come back? I think we're planning to be back on October 15th, which I know is a Friday. So that'll be just before that weekend. Mm -hmm. But we need a couple weeks to reorient. We've just relaunched the website and there's some new projects within that that we're working on. And we feel like it's a time for us to step back, recenter there, encourage everybody to go read their news from the Optimist Daily on a daily basis. And we will be back uh, in a couple of weeks once we've been able to kind of Get a little bit of uh, personal centering done, exactly. right? <laughs> personal, personal, and professional, professional centering, centering. Yeah. and and really, as we look, because you know we've never taken a season, right? We've never had Optimus Daily Update Season One, Optimus Daily Update Season Two, right? We've just been had going, been going. And I think Amelia and I, when you were out summers, were talking about just this ongoing, never-ending. The it feels like this pandemic period has gotten longer. This Groundhog Day. It's Groundhog Day. Still, it's been a year and a half and almost nothing feels different. It's been almost a lost year and a half (laughs) or maybe two. And you and I in our our pre-record check-in were complaining about people we love who we haven't yet been able to really see, whether because of COVID restrictions or fears Mm -hmm. on one or another party's part. And, um, it's just very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to take a beat. We're going to recenter. We're going to come back with a new energy and a new zest for optimism yes. and the Optimus daily update. Yeah. But today we are going back to school. That's right. <laughs> That's the other thing we've got going on is school. Exactly. School and parents. So there are a lot of great stories today, but Christy and I are going to take kind of a parenting focus on the Optimus daily update. My headline reads, struggling with the back to school season for tips to get kids back on track. Now, this article is fantastic because it talks about different ways of helping get your kids back on track. But I actually think we also need to get like moms and dads and parents back on track because this has just been such a intense twist into going back to school. So the four tips are establish a morning routine, seek out academic health, refresh social skills, and identify lingering traumas. Now, I think these appeal to both parents and children, right? A good morning routine for parents is fantastic. Establish one like that for your kids. So, you know, make sure that the process of waking up, sticking to an early morning routine exists for both you and the kiddos. Asking for academic help, seek it out early in the year. Don't hesitate. Contact your teachers. Get back involved. Find tutors or other online resources. Depending on where your kid is in school, you know, Khan Academy is this great online resource available to most.edu email holders. Refreshing social skills, right? We all need a refresher on this. (laughs) I was laughing yesterday. I was like, do teenagers, when you say hello to them and ask how they are, do they ask you back or not? And the answer is generally no, but it's okay to refresh social skills for young and old on how we interact as a community again. And then by identifying lingering traumas, we just sort of talk through that stuff, those fears, those things that you are really freaking out or your child might be really freaking out about that Mm -hmm. you haven't addressed. So (laughs) uh, similar, I feel like, Christy, this is what you and I did for each other this morning. (laughs) So it was pretty Uh much like we we just like lived our message this morning at the Optimist Daily. What headline did you find in the parenting pack? So my headline, and I have a teen son, and so both of these articles actually really spoke to me because he's back in school trying to figure out how to manage that in-person learning, which is much better. He's thrilled. But the other situation is he's a junior in high school and he's trying to think about what he wants to do with his life and with his, you know, college. He he does plan to go to college. And um, he told me the other day he wants to study aerospace engineering or aeronautical engineering and I'm like where right did that you come were telling people you know, like, this new astrophysicist okay, is in development right. here <laughs> but uh, I'm totally supportive apparently he took some skills assessment test which is great I want to support that totally but the other thing that I want him to think about and he needs to think about to graduate is to get like community service hours and volunteering and also 
you know, teenagers can be, they can be very passionate, but they can also be a little bit blasé or maybe they're passionate. They just don't like talking to you about what their passions are. <laughs> I don't but know. It's, but it's not um, just falling. Exactly. It's like finding something to find, fire up that passion. Right. Finding that purpose. So my headline that I wanted to look into and read a little bit this morning was help your teen find purpose through activism and volunteering. And this is something that we think about a lot here at the Optimist Daily. And I've been thinking about this myself in my professional career, just having purpose, knowing why you're doing what you're doing. It really is so beneficial. And research has shown that volunteer work and activism can also add into that physical and mental health. And part of that is because when you do something that you feel passionate about, you feel good about doing, it boosts your own self-esteem. It boosts your feeling of connection with other people and with the world. And those are both really important for feeling good about yourself in the world. And so this kind of an orientation can be very important and very impactful for teens as they try to figure out who they are in the world and they yeah. struggle with their identity. And so as a parent, encouraging our teens to get involved with the community through volunteering, encouraging them to figure out what it is that they really want to do with their lives, building that confidence, building purpose are super important. And so this article talks about four ways you can maybe give them a little leg up there, give them support in figuring that out for themselves. And we can't tell them what they're going to fall in love with doing. That has to come from the inside, right? All we can do is help them by supporting them and giving them the framework within which they can explore and develop. And so this article, it's pretty simple, straightforward, but first of all, it talks about following their passions, finding things that they care about and helping them get connected with that. And maybe there's a volunteer organization they can get involved with or an activism that they can get involved with. Identifying purpose, whether it's feeling upset about injustices that are being observed or feeling like... Um, they really want to clean up the the beach and getting that, helping them finding whatever their personal purpose might be. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't seem to be connecting with anything, maybe addressing the reasons for hesitancy. Maybe there's a, a sense of being shy or not wanting to stand out uh, for one reason or another. But how can we encourage our kids to think outside the box? And maybe there's a role model they can identify with, and that can be the the spark which lights their their particular interests or their their passion my son like he's he's a funny kid because he he's almost like gaming this the, the high school system <laughs> he wants, he's like he's looking like, at what's like, the best kids. path like, to achieve I, yeah. high level status yeah kind of you know how can i get as many credits as possible <laughs> and how can i get the highest grade point average as possible you know and if he told me uh, the other day that he's in 12 different uh clubs and I'm like, what, what are they? What? How can you do 12 different clubs? Anyway, he's not hesitant about getting involved, but I think he might be hesitant about really claiming his particular thing. And so that's mm -hmm. my personal challenge is helping him narrow his his interests. So that it makes well, difference. you know, I think it's it's also important. So we were having this discussion with uh, our our junior in high school as well, is that volunteering isn't just about checking a box. It's about using it as an opportunity to put a stake in the ground. And so sometimes it can be difficult, right? If you don't know if you're super passionate about, you know, I don't know, animal welfare, right? But, and so you find yourself volunteering at a animal shelter. It's not necessarily about knowing that that is your core life passion so much as it is about doing a really good job working there and right. not just checking the box, but digging in, getting to know the people, yeah. understanding the organization and understanding their passion and their mission to help you better advise your own, right? It doesn't, you don't have to like start working in your mission. You just have to start working in somebody's mission right. to help you understand yeah. what your mission could be. Right. So I love, I love this story because it's also like, very real for very for parents everywhere <laughs> as we look at our kids college applications and and you know what the what the future of that will look like so um <laughs> definitely a great story there's a lot of other great stories on the optimist daily today and there will be for the next two weeks uh headlines include lord uplifts new zealand's indigenous language with a new mini album new study identifies why you should definitely be eating more spinach 
how to avoid the mid-afternoon caffeine crash. And Colorado's reform law shows promise for changing the culture of policing. What else, Christy? Well, there's an article about how portable solar-powered batteries can help expand access to clean energy. Another great uh, article there. A technique measuring drinking water quality using a smartphone camera. And finally, the Washington National Cathedral is going to retire Confederate-themed stained glass in a new chapter for maybe uh, just re- recentering yeah. our country on, on you know, yeah. some of the wins. Exactly. Um, and that that is all for today's Optimist Daily update. Uh, we are happy to be here. Summers, I'm glad to have you back. And I look forward to digging into the website these next couple of weeks. And you guys will miss you. But uh, we'll be back after our little hiatus with more positive solutions. And we promise to keep sharing these kinds of solution-oriented stories with ideas on how you can participate in a changing world. Ensure it's changed for the good. Go check out theoptimistdaily.com. You can see more there. And we promise to keep covering current events with legitimate sources, offering you the information we all need to help chart new paths for all of us. Thank you, everyone. Help us keep the Optimist Daily free to all who need it, supported by those who can by becoming an emissary on OptimistDaily.com. And just between now and the 15th of October, check it out. Share an article or two. And uh, go back and listen to some back episodes of the Optimist Daily Update if you need to hear our lovely voices. We look forward to talking to you again soon.